I'm really excited about this because we found a mock draft that has trades in it. So you're not seeing the Chicago Bears do nothing at one and at the same time goes three rounds deep. So I'm going to be able to go very deep in this dynasty mock draft. And these landing spots are good, not great. Obviously, every draft is going to have some landing spots we don't love. But before we get into anything, hit that like button. Subscribe if you play Dynasty. And if you want to get in a draft with us, make sure you go sign up for Underdog Fantasy. You can find the link to Underdog, of course, in the comment section in the description. When you sign up for Underdog with promo code Flock, they're going to match your first deposit dollar for dollar up 200 and you're going to get our 2023 Dynasty Rankings. They just launched a million-dollar best ball draft contest, which I am already getting in way too many leagues. But anyway, that should be about it. Let's go through and let's dive into this list. Bijan Robinson here goes at one. Now, I understand the initial reaction for this is, oh my gosh, Mason, this mock draft is so unrealistic. They have DeAndre Swift. They're going to re-sign Jamal Williams. There's no way they take a running back. Well, yeah, that's my initial reaction until you really think about it. Because Jamal Williams isn't getting any younger. Jamal Williams was drafted in 2017. Jamal Williams right now, if we're going to be pulling this up, well, yes, he's coming off a phenomenal season. At the end of the day, hell, the man is about to turn 28 years old. I'd imagine the Detroit Lions sign him to like a two to three year deal where they can get out of the contract next offseason because that's just how the running back position is treated nowadays. While I love DeAndre Swift, while at one point I had DeAndre Swift inside our top 10 dynasty running back rankings, and I don't regret that in the slightest, come on. The Detroit Lions have clearly shown that they don't view him as a feature down back. They view him as a committee running back. This coaching staff was not there at the time DeAndre Swift was drafted. The Detroit Lions don't have many holes either, so it's a possibility. That this team goes out there and they invest into an elite level running back. With Bijan Robinson, if he were to get drafted here, and this mock draft has him going there at pick 23, we can almost guarantee that he is going to be the workhorse running back day one. Running behind an elite offensive line in what this past season was a phenomenal offense, probably only getting better with Jamison Williams coming in. Yeah. Good spot from an offensive standpoint. Bad spot considering the fact that he had split with Swift. Kind of is what it is, though. Now, going over to our second spot, we're going to have Bryce Young. Bryce Young in this draft actually ended up going at pick one. The Indianapolis Colts traded up to get him. And I think that we've seen the Colts be an organization that's been able to prove that they're functional. They're not the Cleveland Browns. They're not the New York Jets. They're not even the Chicago Bears. This is a team that can stay competitive. This is a team that's not just cursed from the top down and has a horrible owner. Now, yes, obviously they made a play with the coaching staff this past season to guarantee that they got a top NFL draft pick so they could finally address the quarterback position. Young would be stepping into a spot where you have Pittman, you have Alec Pierce, you have Jonathan Taylor. So it's not the worst spot in the world. And if he's the number one quarterback off the board in the NFL draft, I mean, we know that NFL scouts are way smarter than anybody out here talking about these guys on YouTube. Now going over to our next guy, CJ Stroud. At three, Stroud goes to the Houston Texans. Don't love the situation on the surface, but if you're thinking about Houston for the long term, this is a team while, yeah, the roster's horrible. They don't really have any wide receivers. They have a ton of assets. This is a team that saved a ton of money by not having to pay a stud franchise quarterback like Deshaun Watson. This is a team that got three additional first round picks with that Deshaun Watson trade. This is a team that now has a new coaching staff. So on the surface, it's a horrible spot to be landing in because of the Deshaun Watson trade. I'm going to be cautiously optimistic that the Houston Texans may be able to put pieces around Stroud in the short term. But keep in mind, this is one of those dysfunctional franchises from the top down that we were talking about previously. Now going over to four, we're going to mix it up a bit. I'm going Anthony Richardson. With Richardson in this mock draft, he goes to the Carolina Panthers pick six. So what does that tell us? That tells us he's a guaranteed starting NFL quarterback. I don't know if he's going to be good at the next level, but what I do know is he's going to get the opportunity and he will be good when he starts in the NFL 
for fantasy purposes because the man has a ton of rushing upside. The situation you'd be stepping into in Carolina, you have DJ Moore. That's about it. But still, you got DJ Moore, so it could be significantly worse. I'm going to be drafting him here strictly because we know he's going to be a starter. He's going to have job security given this draft capital. And at the same time, rushing upside, rushing upside, rushing upside. Don't overthink it. Now, our next spot's where it gets very difficult. I'm going to go Will Levis. He goes to the Raiders, pick seven here. You're going to the Raiders, pretty good spot. You have Devontae Adams. You have Josh Jacobs, presumably. You have some rushing upside. Obviously, Levis injured this past season. So this past year, he doesn't demonstrate it. But as a junior, this is a quarterback that had rushing upside. So I'm going to be fine taking him here. Obviously, this is super flex. And if you're playing in a one quarterback league, I got news for you. Yeah, just drop these guys down to the second round, okay? I understand everybody wants to make one quarterback videos. It's super easy. Just don't value quarterbacks if you're playing in a one QB league. Now, our next spot is not the easiest in the world. We have a couple different players we could choose from. I think it almost would come down to just using your roster as a tiebreaker. I personally want to continue to plant my flag on Jackson Smith and Jigba. I've been talking about this guy for God knows how long. This is a player that, yes, won't be great at the NFL Combine. Yes, he's not going to run a 4-4-5. You're drafting him because he gets open. You're drafting him because he can see volume. We know that there can be wide receivers that are incredibly fast, that are valuable from an NFL standpoint because they can stretch NFL defenses, they can make defensive coordinators adjust, and they can allow guys underneath to draw targets. That's the Jamison Williams. That's why John Ross goes so high in the NFL draft. That's why Henry Ruggs goes so high in the NFL draft. That's why Tutu Atwell, Dwayne Eskridge, I mean, Tyquan Thornton all go so high in the NFL draft because those players can provide something from a real life standpoint that you may not be getting in fantasy. Jason's the exact opposite of that. Jason's value is going to be more so in line with in Amon Ross St. Brown, where he is going to be directly translating his on-field value to fantasy football value because where the value comes from JSN is as a volume hog. He outproduces Garrett Wilson, outproduces Chris Olave in the same offense at a younger age. That's all I need to know. He also lands in a very good spot here. He goes pick 25 to the New York Giants where he can immediately be the number one target the second that he steps into that locker room. I would love this spot for JSN. Obviously, the Giants need wide receiver help, and this would give it to him. Now, going over to our next player, Jameer Gibbs goes to the Bills at 27. Now, with this initial landing spot, at first, you're over the moon, right? You're going, okay, Jameer Gibbs would be the clear starting running back here with Jameer Gibbs. He's landing in elite-level offense as well. So, hell, we're getting a starting running back in an elite-level offense that can catch the ball. In theory, that sounds great. But the main issue with Jameer Gibbs is people are worried about the size leading to him not seeing any work inside the red zone. Combine that with the fact that Josh Allen will be vulturing red zone touchdowns anyway. You can almost guarantee while Gibbs would be playing in a phenomenal offense, he's going to be going to an offense where the quarterback doesn't really check down to the running backs because he can run it himself. And on top of this, the quarterback's going to be vulturing a ton of that value at the goal line. So on paper, it's the best spot ever for Jameer Gibbs. In reality, it's a little difficult for me to get there. Now, going over to our next player, Quinton Johnston goes to the Kansas City Chiefs pick 19. The Chiefs trade up to get him. Yes. On paper, phenomenal landing spot. Yes, he would probably be the wide receiver one there. Obviously, the number two target behind Travis Kelsey. With Quinton Johnston, I would want to put him at wide receiver one. I think most people would. We can clearly see that the Chiefs are a better landing spot than the Giants. I just personally think that JSN is a tier above him when it comes to just wide receiver prospect profiles. Maybe things change over the coming months. It would be a phenomenal landing spot. As of now, I actually have Johnston ranked behind Addison. But given this landing spot in particular, like I said, I think we would have to move him up a bit. Now, going over to our next guy, will be Jordan Addison. Goes pick 20 to the Houston Texans. I mean, just like what we were talking about previously with the C.J. Stroud spot. I mean, in Houston, this is a team that has assets where they will be able to invest into weapons just like they do with Addison. In this scenario, he's going to 
pair up with CJ Stroud. So this is possibly a pairing that can continue to increase in value for a three to four year period with Jordan Addison. Right now, he's my wide receiver two in this draft class, regardless of landing spot. So I like the player a ton. Belindikoff winner as a sophomore. He gets the draft capital. He goes to a wide receiver room that doesn't have a ton of competition. It's just difficult to buy into him when we know that, in my mind, Daniel Jones and Patrick Mahomes are more established quarterbacks than what you'd have with CJ Stroud. Now, going over to our next situation, this is where we have the massive fall off. We've been talking about this for a while now, but after the first nine prospects, I think that there is a significant drop off in tiers. And we're going to be looking at Tajay Spears here, who isn't my favorite player in the world, but what he has going for him is the fact that he lands with the Miami Dolphins. Now, if we're going to be looking at this running back room in Miami, there's nobody left. Literally, there's nobody under contract this next season. Pick 77 would be good enough draft capital where you're going at the beginning of the third round. We can kind of assume that you're going to be the day one starter there. With Tajay Spears, he's a player coming out of a small school. Wasn't a phenomenal pass catcher, but he was hyper efficient. I mean, in 14 games played, the man has 229 carries. The man has 22 receptions, 21 touchdowns. Looking at the draft capital, that's a massive box that he's checking. Looking at the landing spot, it's phenomenal. What we would really want to see is the NFL combine numbers, just getting his official size, not only getting his official size, but his officially testing measurables. The size is going to be the main thing. Now, going over to our next guy, we're going to be looking at Zay Flowers, pick 11. He goes to the Panthers here where he's going to be second fiddle behind DJ Moore. We understand that. You have Richardson going to the Panthers earlier in this draft. With Anthony Richardson, like I said, I'm taking him at four here. I think he has a lot of rushing upside. I think Anthony Richardson himself can be a very strong option in fantasy. The thing is, if we're going to be looking at the wide receiver value, we know that quarterbacks that are going to be providing rushing upside aren't necessarily going to be able to give a ton of value to the wide receivers in their offense unless that quarterback turns into Jalen Hurts. With Zay Flowers, in my mind, he would have almost no shot to go ahead of DJ Moore on the target totem pole. So I think 11 is a fine spot. Now going to 12, Josh Downs is a player that I kind of want to have a little higher than this. He goes to the New England Patriots, pick 46. I think he would be the number one target in this offense, possibly behind Ramadre. With Josh Downs, dominant sophomore season, accounted for like 40% of the receiving yards on a per-game basis at UNC, which of course is incredible. He's stepping into a wide receiver room that desperately needs help. He's going to be playing alongside Jacoby Myers, and then we are going to have Tyquan Thornton stretching the field for Josh Downs operate underneath. So I like the spot. I like the player. I mean, a player that actually lands in a much better landing spot with draft capital, but I can't take him, is going to be Tyler Scott. Now, Tyler Scott in this draft goes to the Los Angeles Chargers at pick 21. Now, I need to go through and do some research. I have a feeling that maybe Tyler Scott's dad wrote this mock draft, wrote this article, and that's why he's going in the first round here to the Chargers. But in all seriousness, I mean, Joshua Palmer, when he went in the third round, was not something we were expecting at all. Like, literally, I had to look up who Joshua Palmer was whenever he went off the draft board. I believe that was in 2020. So we've seen the Chargers make surprising picks before. It would be one of the best landing spots you could ever imagine. Tyler Scott did play with Alec Pierce two years ago where Alec Pierce was playing ahead of him. Great landing spot. I just don't believe, I don't believe in the player. Like at running back, if we find a phenomenal landing spot with draft capital, I'm willing to go all in. Wide receiver is a little different where I don't like this profile. Now, 14, we're going to be looking at Michael Mayer who goes to the Jacksonville Jaguars. I think we can assume that Evan Ingram is probably going to be back with Jacksonville. If you're ever drafting a rookie tight end, it's not for year one production. Very rarely are you ever going to get a tight end and he turns into Pat Frymuth year one. I mean, Evan Ingram year one way back with the Giants in 2017. That's very rarely ever happening. Most likely what's going to end up happening is you take him at the end of the first round, the beginning of the second round. The next offseason, he's worth a mid-second round pick and you're just sitting there asking yourself, why the hell did I draft this guy if I could have just traded for him for a similar or cheaper price a year from now? So it's obviously never a good thing to be drafting rookie tight ends. 
Now, our next guy is going to be Jalen Hyatt, who goes pick 22 to the Baltimore Ravens. I actually think this pick could make a ton of sense from a real life perspective. Going back to what we we're discussing, where it's the exact opposite situation of a Jackson Smith and Jigba, where Jason's not going to have the speed to be able to stretch NFL defenses, to be able to help other players in his offense generate separation. Whereas Jalen Hyatt will be able to do that. Jalen Hyatt's going to come in. He's going to stretch NFL defenses. Maybe other players underneath, like Mark Andrews in this instance, would be able to see some more space. Now, does that translate to fantasy football production? No, it is not. So even though Jalen Hyatt's going round one here, pick 22 to the Baltimore Ravens, I'm still going to have him behind a lot of other players that go after him in the NFL draft, like JSN, who went at 25, like Zay Flowers, who went at 39, like Josh Downs, who goes at 46. But now our next player, I know everybody's looking for him. Zach Charbonnet went to the Jacksonville Jaguars in the middle of the third round here. I like Charbonnet. He can catch the ball, and he has size. I mean, at this point of the process, that's really all we're looking for. If you can catch the ball and you have a three-down frame, I mean, you are a running back that we should get excited about. But going to Jacksonville with not much draft capital, I think he would almost be a guaranteed second fiddle to Travis Etienne. Etienne was just drafted in 2021. Etienne was drafted in the first round as well, so they're going to have the fifth-year option. So, I mean, you're essentially just guaranteeing yourself a handcuff back with Zach Charbonnet at this price. I mean, obviously, he's a good player. If you were to be the starter there in Jacksonville, if something were to happen to Travis Etienne, I think you would have a ton of upside. It's just a very tough landing spot. Now, our next guy will be Rasheed Rice, who goes pick 59 to the Buffalo Bills. This pick would essentially indicate, you know what? Oh, yeah, we're out on Gabriel Davis. Gabe Davis is not the guy. Gabe Davis is not going to be getting the job done. I think you'd be coming in and honestly just playing in three wide receiver sets where Gabe Davis is probably stretching the field. Stevon Diggs is continuing to see a 25% team target share. Rasheed Rice would probably be a very valuable asset in best ball, but very similar to the Kansas City Chiefs. Almost the issue you run into with the Buffalo Bills is the fact while, yeah, they put up a million points, they're going to spread the ball out to so many different players that even though the pie is so large, if it's being sliced into so many different pieces, no one piece itself is that valuable outside of the top guys like a Stefan Diggs or outside of a Travis Kelsey. Now, going over to our next spot, we're going to be looking at Devin H. And goes pick 90 to the Dallas Cowboys. Now, I think we're going to assume that Tony Pollard gets hit with the franchise tag, that Ezekiel Elliott restructures the contract. So, H. And would kind of be here for the long-term play in Dallas. It's going to be a committee running back, hyper-efficient, can catch the ball out of the backfield. So, you'd be drafting him here, not necessarily for his role or his production in 2023, rather what he could be in the long term. Now, we're going to be looking at Tank Bigsby, 94 to the Philadelphia Eagles. With Philadelphia, a lot's up in the air. I mean, we really don't know what this running back room is going to be like. I think looking at how Miles Sanders was treated down the stretch, it's Hard to imagine that the Eagles would be too optimistic about Miles Sanders' future in Philadelphia. Not going to be surprised at all if they do bring Miles Sanders back, if it's more so in a committee role, or if they just let Miles Sanders walk to another destination. I mean, I don't love the player. It's hard for me to speak on it until we actually get the NFL Combine. Now, our next spot, Roshan Johnson, Hoka Morris, 96 to the Arizona Cardinals. Sneaky good landing spot. James Conner does have the guaranteed contract this next season. In my mind, James Conner is almost guaranteed to have that three-down starting role, which is why I've been drafting him a ton in those underdog drafts in, I believe, about the eighth round. But anyway, with Roshan, he'd be going there for the long-term play. Very similar to what we were talking about with HM. Now, our next guy, Keishon Boutte, 64 Chicago. You have the profile. I mean, obviously, Debbie Darling, incredible as a true freshman at LSU. And you get the draft capital. You go pick 64. But you're going to a Chicago Bears team that just had the worst passing offense that we've seen since 2009. There's no passing volume whatsoever to go around. The quarterback's going to take rushing touchdowns. I, I would hate the spot. I mean, any wide receiver landing in Baltimore, any wide receiver landing in Chicago is just going to be so gross. Now our next spot, Dalton Kincaid, 45, Green Bay Packers. I mean, good long-term play, but very similar to what we were talking about with Michael Mayer previously. Just very difficult to invest into those rookie tight ends when you know you can almost just trade for them at a guaranteed discount a year from now, even if that discount's not going to be that large. Very rarely are you getting a fry muth. Now, our last guy that we're going to include in this was the last guy included in the actual mock draft. Zach Evans, pick 100 to the New York Giants. 
I mean, if you see a similar trend to a lot of these round two running backs, a lot of guys that are going to places where we're not excited about year one, but possibly excited about what they could be down the road, just throwing darts at the dartboard, trying to find someone. When you're taking someone in the late second, like a Zach Evans pick 100 here, you're never guaranteed that that player is going to be anybody, but you're just trying to find some upside. And beyond Saquon Barkley, it is a very thin New York Giants depth chart. But I think that's all I got for you. If you enjoyed the video, please go down there, drop a like, subscribe if you play Dynasty. If you want to get in a draft with us, link in the comment section, link in the description. Underdog Fantasy, use promo code Flock. I think that's all I got for you. I really appreciate you and really hope you have a great day. And also really hope I get to see you with the video tomorrow.